magnitude 3.9 earthquake hits Oklahoma and a swarm, and we'll take a look at that. But first I want to tell you it's in an area of the mid-continental rift. And a rift takes place, as we know, for example, the Great Rift Valley in uh, uh, East Africa. This is actually the rift valley of the mid-continental rift. Look at that. You can see that uh, omega-looking thing over the Great Lakes. That's a mid-continental rift. And that's the magma under there. That's that mantle plume. Uh, the black line is the New Madrid seismic zone, which is another rift valley. It should be called the uh, New Madrid rift valley. That's a real foot rift zone. And uh, basically, it's uh, Mississippi River all the way through into the area of uh, Lake Ontario and um, the St. Lawrence River of uh, Quebec. Now, that part is open, Mississippi River to the south of the United States, the uh, St. Lawrence River above uh, eastern United States, and that red thing that you see there, that horseshoe-shaped thing, the omega shape, is the mid-continental rift magma. So let's keep that in mind. It goes through Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and then sweeps west towards uh, New Mexico. So that is uh, magma. They don't know where that magma is coming from. But that's been there since a billion years ago. This is where the area of, uh, it basically, it basically in the area of Wichita and uh, Oklahoma City. And we, it has shaken uh, all the way in um, Oklahoma and Kansas. We know Kansas has Kimber, uh, Kimberlite diamond spewing earthquakes, uh, volcanoes, sorry. Diamond spewing volcanoes, Kimberlite volcanoes. They spew diamonds and uh, gems and semi-precious stones and uh, let's go into our shake maps okay shake intensity right there and into our oh sorry the t i want to go into the tectonics okay population density right there not too much in that area of the shaking intensity wichita of course in oklahoma city we have and let's go to our Aerial now. Okay, that's it right there. Oklahoma City, Wichita. And if we extrapolate, of course, this uh, intensity, you can see that it must have been taking area, this area right here. I'm sure uh, Wichita and uh, Oklahoma City have uh, felt that. So this is the area right here. This is the area of the mantle plume that we said before we saw that horseshoe shaped thing right here. This is the New Madrid seismic zone right here. And um, as we know, this is the Mississippi River here, that's St. Lawrence Seaway, and Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. That crack just sweeps this way like this. That's the New Madrid seismic zone. And that's um, a rift valley, actually. So that's separating this area, area eastern end of the United States this way. This is the mantle plume the western part going down this way and going to texas and then sweeping into uh, uh new mexico arizona new mexico right this way they don't know where that magma is coming from but that's old it's about 880 million years old about a billion years ago that magma was still there um so is it um are are these quakes man-made or are they uh, uh, are they uh, part of the magma under there? As we said before, we had Kansas has uh, at least 15 volcanoes there. We, we, we know this from previous videos that we had and read articles on. But now let's go to our insights on the new uh, Madrid seismic, no, sorry, the um, mid-continental rift. Large igneous province causing geologists to rethink some long-standing assumptions about how this giant feature formed. That's part of the beautiful uh, mid-continental Tetegouche State Park, Minnesota. Beautiful waters, Lake Superior. Okay, and uh, again, more of you. Mid-continental rift, 1.1 billion year old volcanic rocks in the Interstate Park, long border between Minnesota and Wisconsin at the St. Croix River, cutting through a series of lava flows. You can see that beautiful there area there. And 
formation. That's our map again of the horseshoe-shaped magma. Okay, going through Oklahoma, Kansas, um, and down all the way down to Texas, actually. It goes all the way down to Texas. Now, and then sweeps west, as we saw before. And these are the movements there, as you can see there. That's Africa. That's Africa. And this is the old map of the horseshoe, that horseshoe-shaped mantle. Okay, even before the uh, North America plate joined with the uh, uh, Latin, you know, South America plate, as you can see there. That was still, that was there from that time. That's Hudson Bay right there. Okay, and going back to our uh, rift, how did the hybrid rift, this hybrid rift valley, concentrated mass exerts a greater, a greater gravitational pull than the area around, resulting with so sort of positive gravity anomaly. In contrast, typical continental rifts have negative anomalies because they are filled primarily with low density sedimentary rock. Now, um, this is what a rift value looks like. And it has the stretching, stretching from the magma underneath. And that's what it looks like. Okay, that's what it looks like. Surprise, this is from seismic imaging. And how did a hotspot supply the excess magma? The mid-continental rift, MCR, is an extraordinary feature that rose from an unusual combination of continental rift and LIP, a large igneous province, illustrating that over a billion years of Earth history, even unlikely events can happen. Rifting can be classified as passive rifting, which forces pull the lithosphere in opposite directions, extending it, and active rifting where a mantle plume or hotspot thermally uplifts and stretches the crust above. For the mid-continental rift, we suspect that the rifting continent by chance overrode a plume, there's a mantle plume there, or a region of an only hot, hot upper mantle, so both active and passive rifting may have been at play. Okay? So... The mid-continental rift failure, previously thought to have failed, stopped extending because of regional compression associated with Greenville orogeny. But a new age dating shows that most of the compression recorded by reverse faulting occurred long after extension and volcanism ended. So, um, again, that's what we're talking about here. That's the area of our uh, states. Okay, Kansas. Oklahoma, uh, there's this Lake Superior going in through, through uh, Minnesota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and then it goes to Mexico, Arizona this way. Now we know we already have a, a mantle plume here from Baja extending to uh, west of uh, on, under the San Andreas Fault and the Walker Lane Fault System. We've had tremendously large quakes around just the... Um, east of uh, Long Valley Caldera the past few days. And uh, we had their March 18, 5.7 in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we're still having quakes there. And we had the 6.5 March 31st, Idaho, which was 190 miles west of uh, Yellowstone right there. So um, also we've had, oh, sorry, that's the Greek quake that we had before. Sorry, let's go back to our, okay, let's go here. There we are, and um, and these are these are today's. Okay, one point six, one point zero zero point nine, and one one. I think that was the um, three point nine that we talked about. Okay, so that's the three point nine that we talked about that we're talking about. Most of North America, east of the Rocky Mountains, has infrequent earthquakes. Here and there, earthquakes are more numerous. For example, New Madrid seismic zone centered on southeastern Missouri, um, the Charlotte, Camarasca seismic zone in recent Quebec, New England, New York, Philadelphia, Wilmington, uh, the Rocky Mount East East uh, earthquakes east of Rocky Mountains, although less frequent than the West, are typically felt over a much broader region than earthquakes of similar magnitude in the West. East of the Rockies, earthquakes can be felt over an area more than ten times larger than a similar magnitude earthquake on the west coast. Uh, induced seismicity, we're not going to talk about the man-made earthquakes. This, unfortunately, and they never talk about the new Madrid, the um, mid-continental rift valley there. But um, it, it is there, as you saw from the map. 
So I don't believe that all these quakes are all man-made. Okay, this is the New Madrid right there. New Madrid, Missouri. New Madrid, Missouri. Okay. Uh, as we can see, that is Mississippi River and New Madrid Seismic Zone, Rift Valley, actually this way, flanking Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. And as we said before, wherever you have a river, you have a fault line. So that's it. St. Lawrence River is already cracked there. Okay. So I'll leave links below for you for that. And all of you there, please be very careful. Thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.